This is a Tesla wall connector and it is the worst electric vehicle charging point I have ever installed. Let me caveat that by saying, first of all, I am a massive Tesla fanboy. I've got a Tesla Model 3 myself. I love everything to do with Tesla. And I did make a video about this charger maybe a year ago when they first released it saying, Tesla game changer. This is an amazing upgrade from what they previously made, the Gen 2, because it had Wi-Fi connectivity. But that's where the issue is. On almost every installation where we're trying to fit one of these, we've had trouble connecting it to the Wi-Fi. When you're an electrician and you're spending two or three hours just trying to pair the stupid charging point to the customer's Wi-Fi. It's so frustrating. What we've decided to do is do things a little bit differently today. We're installing one here for our customer who's just got a Tesla Model 3 arrived. We're gonna pair this up to the Wi-Fi first and we're gonna do it right next to the router and hopefully it will go smoothly. Then when we mount it on the wall, it's already paired up and connected. And then we'll show you if we manage to make it work or not. How would you rate yourself? How would <laughs> I rate myself? Slugs, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I mean, what is it with a big cable? Is that what you're No, saying? no, no. It's not, it's not a trick question. Uh, pretty confident. Yeah, out of yeah. 10. Eight? Eight out of 10. Seven or okay. eight. So, Ruben thinks he's an eight out of 10 at wiring up plugs. Let's put that to the test. Right, Ruben, your challenge, should mm -hmm. you choose to accept it, is to wire up a plug to this, okay? So all we want is a plug, a bit of flex, mm -hmm. wire it into this, like we did in the training on Friday. Yep. And the aim is then we can plug it in in the house, get it all connected to the Wi-Fi, commissioned, and then we mount it up on the wall. Are you up for the challenge? I am. <laughs> You, sorry, that, you, you didn't sound, that was not, not No, I, I was gonna say, I am voice. still waking up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Plug tops, where are they? Wouldn't that be embarrassing if an electrician didn't have a plug top on his van? Luke, you stole my plug tops. Oh, here we go, now I've got a whole box of them here. I knew, I knew I had some, there we go. I've further look at the other one. <laughs> it's just four mil flex. <laughs> right, let me, let me explain that oh, joke. Yeah. I was a little bit annoyed this morning. I was in a, a bit of a bad mood because I went to the office to pick up the cable. I specifically sent Ruben yesterday to go to the office and check that we had the three core four mil or six mil armored that we needed for this job. There's a big drum of cable at the office and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the one. Go and check Ruben and make sure it's the right cable. So he phones me up and he's like, yeah, it's actually four core, four mil, but you know, that'll be fine. I was like, okay, perfect, that'll be fine. I got to the office this morning, looked at the cable. It's 2.5 millimeter squared, not four mil. And I was like, oh, Ruben, do you not know how to read the side of cables yet? When you've been doing something for a long time, you take it for granted, but actually it's something that if you don't know, you don't know. Armored cables have the writing on the side that says four times 2.5 millimeter squared or three times four millimeter squared. But if you don't know that, all you're doing is looking at the end of the cable and trying to guess what size it is. So to cut a long story short, we've ordered the cable, the wholesaler is bringing it over and it should be here within the next half an hour. So I've just taken off the cord grip, laid the cable where I want it, and now I've just measured up all the cables to length and how I want to dress them in. I'm gonna pop these out, terminate them, and then push them back in just so that it makes life a bit easier. And then cord grip back on. Yeah, this is the fatal mistake I made last time in the training. I've got to wire it through, through this hole, otherwise it's not gonna close properly. So I've literally just wired the flex in at this end, just, you know, loosely in order to power it up. And then we can pop that on there. We will get power and then we can use this commissioning card, hopefully, to commission it sans, sans problème. We shall see. So you wanted to plug it into right. the house? Yeah, so what we'll do, well, we can plug it into the Jackery. Oh, nice, yeah. um, I think, because the Wi-Fi router, you know, if we can get it mm. close to the house, then that should be fine. Yeah. And that means we don't need to go in, into the house. 
So our lovely customer has given us coffee. The wholesaler is about 10 minutes away with the cable. So, so far things are going well, but this is the test. Will it commission properly? So we've got this power bank that we use. We're just gonna plug it in. And then we should see the little green lights coming on. They do give you quite comprehensive instructions with these. We just scan the QR code and it will tell us to join the network of the charging point and we are connected to that now go to that ip address and it gives us this screen where it helps us to do all the commissioning and pair it to the wi-fi so the first thing that we're going to do is wi-fi moment of truth okay we're connected to the wi-fi it says it's active yes connected to internet boom well that was easier than um than previous attempts. So we'll do the software update on it. I may have to eat humble pie here and say, the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector is the best EV charging point I've ever installed. Why could it not do that on the training session the other day where we spent three hours and it wouldn't find my Wi-Fi in the office? I mean, at least it wasn't three hours here. <laughs> yeah, but this well, is the thing. This is great because so like... now it's like, oh, brilliant. The charger's connected to the Wi-Fi. It's up to date. That's taken us like half an hour to just get that set up. But now we, we're relaxed because yeah. we know the install part we're confident with mm. as long as there are no unexpected hiccups. That part we're confident with. The Wi-Fi stuff, electricians are not IT specialists and that's the thing. You kind of have to become a bit of an IT specialist to do all of these smart tech devices these days. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comments. Um, but it is a challenge sometimes. We are good to go basically. We can just start getting it on the wall. going to use this for the first time in this uh, in this way I've never used it this way before that's quite nice hopefully they've they've wrapped it a little bit too wide really so it might not work but we'll give it a go it's not like it's a really 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 long run but I just love I just love using this thing Works pretty well. Um, not perfect because the the roll is quite big, but you get the idea anyway. And if you've got a slightly tighter roll, then even better. But maybe we'll just go old school and do it this way. So the charging point's going on the wall here. Parking space is just there. Customer wants it a little bit around the corner just so it's tucked out of the way and not too visible. So Ruben's gonna start marking the holes, drilling, getting it fixed up, drilling a hole through into the other side. We're gonna run the cable all the way along on the inside of the garage, down in the corner inside the garage, drill through next to this existing cable that pops through to feed the garage consumer unit. And then we've had our landscaping team in, they've put a duct in here, which runs along under this path. Now they had a bit of a nightmare with this, I'll explain that a little bit later. Essentially, we're gonna feed directly off the meter box. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that. You can't put equipment in the meter box. Well, I've got a little trick that I'm gonna show you today. So we'll show you how we do this. I'll just grab a meter box key and I'll show you. So in this meter box, we've got a lovely space and the customer needs a main isolator switch anyway. So we're gonna be fitting one of these, Wilex Rec2 SPD. These are really nice uh, main isolator switch with a surge protection device built in because we need to fit surge protection in order to protect the charging point and the car from the event of a surge, which in the countryside like this, it happens more often than you might think. So we're putting that in, it gives them a main point of isolation as well. We're gonna have to rejig these tails a little bit. So we'll take them into the main switch. Out of the main switch, we'll go into two little Henley blocks or Lucy blocks or whatever you call them here. One for each uh, line, one for line and one for neutral. Then out of that, obviously we'll take the house consumer unit tails, but then for the charging point, we've got to fit this new little consumer unit, which has pen fault protection built in and RCD protection built in. This is quite a nifty little unit by Garrow and it will just fit under there and then we'll run out of here with our armored cable going to the charge point 
and that will go in the duct and all the way along to the garage. Inside here, it's quite a clever little setup. So you've got a 40 amp RCBO, double pole. It is type A, which is required for electric vehicle charging points and for anything that might have electronics and DC leakage in it. Then out of that, it goes into this contactor and the contactor is controlled by this little device here, which is a voltage relay. The voltage relay will do the measuring and if there's a loss of the pen conductor, which is the combined earth and neutral conductor that feeds the property from this supply cable, if that drops out, the charger will cut off. This contactor will break contact of the cables going to the charging point, line, neutral and earth all broken and that means that there's no danger of somebody getting an electric shock because of a loss of the pen conductor. That's a little bit complicated. In the Tesla manual they do have a lot of information about this and it refers to a John Ward video which goes really in depth about that subject so I'll let you watch that. We'll leave a link in the description and maybe a card up here where you can watch that later on. But essentially this is a safety device that is absolutely required for installing a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector. So what's your plan with this Ruben? Fantastic. Why did you not drill it before? Just didn't, I guess, <laughs> just in case it didn't line up where I wanted it. So you've not got very much confidence in your own, um, in your own <laughs> skills. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine to do it that way. We can um, do a pilot mm -hmm. and then go through with the bigger one. So let's initiate you into the Artisan Angle Drilling Academy. Oh, damn. Some very long drill bits here, which we're gonna use to drill through here and drill through at that end. Now, if you have not been watching the channel for decades, like some of our loyal subscribers and channel members, you might not know about this because we've not shown it off for a while, but we are experts at angle drilling. So we're going to do a bit of angle drilling today. We're going to go through here. We're going to pick a nice angle that will enable us to get the cables swooping smoothly in from the other side. So what I'm thinking is if we drill up at an angle like that, mm -hmm. that will mean that when we come along with the cable, we come down here, it will swoop nicely down inwards. Why should you not drill like that? So that water can't seep through? Yeah, because if it's raining, the rain's dribbling down here straight into the building and you can get damp in your building. So you always want to drill um, up from the outside if you're drilling from outside in. So the first tip, Ruben's figured it out already. Always check what's on the other side of the wall to make sure that you're not drilling into something important. These that's, bricks are nice and soft. stand on this rake like I did as well. <laughs> I was walking, it actually smacked me in the face. <laughs> did you get that on camera? I don't think. Did you? Of all the things to be in the way. That looks heavy. Oh, that's a broom to the face. Oh, that's a broom to the face. Oh, damn. <laughs> I've never had that happen to me. A rake to the face. Angle drilling rule number two, safety gear. Eye protection, ear protection. Angle drilling rule number three, always use a pilot bit first. 10 mil bit as a pilot. And when you're starting it, don't try and start it like that because it will just slip and you'll end up smashing the plastic. Start level, make sure it's on drill and hammer. And what you can do, you can actually hold this. It's not gonna hurt your hand particularly. Just gently, if you hold it, it just holds it in place. And then once you've, got, once you've got it started, that's not going anywhere, then you can really start to get the angle that you want. So as steep an angle as possible is probably good in this situation, but we're limited by this plastic because we don't want to mess the plastic up there. Now, ideally what you want to do is turn the drill hammer off just before you pop through the other side, then it doesn't pop the brick out. But how do you know when you're getting close? Best way is to do this. So now we know what our angle is. Look at that, sort of get that angle roughly in mind. Then hold the drill at an angle like that, same kind of angle. We can see our bricks here. We can see the other side here. So we know 
that when we get to here, we're pretty much just about through, right? So what we can do is put some tape on it, just wrap that around like that, and that is a marker. So we know when we get to there, we need to turn hammer off or maybe just a little bit before. Turn hammer off. And there we are. No brick pop? Nope. Perfect. Pop that one in. Awesome. Oh, there's too many rakes for me to stand on. There's, it's like a minefield. So while I stop for a, a little coffee, it's time to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Tradeify. Tradeify is the job management software that we use every day to run all of our jobs. It's an absolute game changer for tradespeople to keep their work organized, especially if you've got a growing business where you've got other guys going out on different jobs. It's just a great way to send all the jobs out to people, organize the materials, do your quotes, invoices, all of that stuff. If you want to head to the link in the description, you can get 50% off Tradeify for your first three months using our special code. Slightly annoying when the drawstring yeah. is, is taken off. Yeah, too short. So we can't use that. We're gonna to have to just try and push the cable in. Mm. Should we just try pushing it in now and just see to make sure it's clear yeah. before we get stuck? It's not gonna be close. Yeah, it's up. Is there? Oh, yeah. brilliant, fantastic. So we'll come through here and then it will give us a bit of a space to swoop up to go up on that line there with the cable. Let's see if he, if he makes it. Okay, go. Oh my goodness! Artisan Angle Drilling Company wins again. Check it out, Rubes. That's perfect. Absolutely bullseye. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a natural, but... Perfect. Mate. They're trying to get me. They're trying to, there's too many rakes in here, okay? Because my face is gonna be battered by the end of this. So if I've, if I've got a black eye, don't be calling the police saying Jordan's beating me up. It's these rakes, you gotta call. Okay, don't tell Jordan, but if you do see me with a black eye, just maybe call the police just in case, you know, for my safety. Thank you. The slight issue with me not being on the tools that often is that there's always one tool that I'm missing or something, you know? So I just said to Reben, oh, have you got a miniature hacksaw? No miniature hacksaw. My uh, CK armor slice tool, which I usually use to terminate armored, I've not got that either, but I do have this Nipex Tubix. Now, I think we've tried this before and we said that it only works really well on larger armored cables, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Worst case scenario, I'm gonna have to just pop to somewhere and pick up a uh, the correct tool. What do you call this? Do you call it, I call it a shroud. Some people call it a boot. Uh, let me know what you call it in the comments. This is where I imitate Lee's how to strip an armored cable. How to strip an armored cable. Lee's 10 million view video. Everyone thinks he looks like a young, uh, young blonde version of Elon Musk. Let's see if that's done the trick or if it's just ruined it. So the idea is to score through this armoring and then it makes it easy to kind of bend it back and cut it off. I've got a feeling that it's not scored through enough. Oh, this is how to butcher an armored cable. It's a good job we've got a bit of slack on this. It just doesn't score through the armoring quite enough. One nicely terminated armored cable. This is my secret weapon secret protector of the knees. It's my old office chair. <laughs> I took it apart 
and I threw it away because it was all broken. I kept the actual bit that you sit on. It's great as a, a knee protector for situations like this when you're just working on rough ground. So I'll let you know a secret behind the camera today is not our usual cameraman Max because Max has had a baby. So congratulations Max. Beautiful new artisan has come into the world. It's going to make an amazing cameraman when he grows up. But today Elijah is covering for Max, doing a spiffing job. He's experiencing the back breaking, excruciating work that Max has to do on a day to day basis. I'm losing my patience and my mind. Anyone else? That's too easy. Surely, surely that's not it. Result, finally. It's something you've got to be very wary of when you're doing pen fault detection devices is making sure that you don't bypass the pen fault device with the earth that goes to the sheath of the cable. Both the earth of the sheath and the earth within the cable need to be uh, interrupted when the pen fault device disconnects. So you've got to put the sheath earth in the outgoing terminal of the contactor as well. Some people forget and then they just bob it into the earth bar. And if you do that, you can really come unstuck because it means that the actual charging point is still earth through the sheath of the cable. So just something to think about. This is Corey's hairdryer, believe it or not, because he's such a prima donna. He uses a Milwaukee hairdryer. Now, Corey, believe it or not, when we uh, cleared out his van, he accidentally gave me this, and it is his, so I'm, I'm looking after it for him. He's back soon. He's coming back to work with us for a few days. He just couldn't, he couldn't get away. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, I think next week he's working with us. So I'm gonna give it back to him then. Well, I'm gonna see if he's actually remembered. As you can see, clipping's going all right. It's going quickly because I didn't want to have to faff around while I was doing this, screwing them in every time. It's just a bit awkward doing it at the same time. So now I can literally just line it up, fold that down, back up, and then that's done. And then it's just a lot quicker. It's a lot more efficient. And then when it comes to the clips, like the linen clips on the way down, then I'll poke that through uh, to the charge side, measure it off, see where I want to strip it, bring it back, strip it, and then Bob's your uncle. So you might be wondering, why do we have to fit all of this gear? Like, you know, it seems a lot just to run an electric vehicle charging point. The reason is, it's a Tesla charger. And this is kind of one of the things I was getting at is that it doesn't have inbuilt pen fault protection. Now, most modern smart EV charging points have that built in. That means you don't need this contactor, you don't need this pen fault protection device. All you need for most EV chargers is a double pole RCBO, and often you can fit that in the existing consumer unit, but we can't here because it's a Tesla charger, you can't just wire it into the consumer unit. And this is a little bit frustrating for customers because all they see is, oh, the Tesla wall connector is cheap, you know, it's like 499 pounds or 399 pounds, whatever it is. It seems cheap on the surface. What they don't realize is it costs a lot more to install because you need all of this extra gear. Like this box here is about 120, 130 quid. Then there's the extra time and labor to put in all of these tails, various bits and pieces which add significantly to the cost of the installation. So often customers come to us and they say, oh, I've got the Tesla charger, can you just fit it? it should be an easy job. And they're thinking all they're doing is gonna pay us for the labor to put it in, but they need so many more materials still to install it safely um, and that's what's kind of frustrating about the Tesla wall connector. Hockey dokie, so let's do our ZE. Main earth, 
in and the live tail in here. 0.27, acceptable or not acceptable? Acceptable. Yeah, should be below PME. 0.8, mm. 5, mm. 0.75. Mm. Really? TNCS. TNS is 0.8, like you said. Oh, right. TNCS, PME is? Oh, 0 0.6. No, no. Lower. Um, 0 0.5. Lower. 0 0.4. Lower. Lower, 0 0.3. Higher. 0 0.37. Lower. 0 0.35. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that took a long time. <laughs> Got there in the end. Yeah, 0 0.35 TNCS is the maximum permitted. So we're not far off, but you know, 0 0.27 is pretty standard, to be honest. So now we connect the main earth in, and then we'll do PFC again. 0 0.5, uh, 85. Yeah, and this is our PFC reading, 854 amps, so 0 0.85 Ka. And then we'll go between line and neutral as well, and just get that reading. 0 0.87, so which of the two do we take down? 0 0.85 or 0 0.87? Exactly, the highest, yep. So 0 0.87 is our PFC and 0 0.27 is our ZE. So we need to do R1 and R2. How's it looking? Uh, yeah, tested 999. All good? Yep. Across all three combinations? Yep. Perfect. You have to get violent with this charger. And push it in to get the screws. What would your parents do if you played music that loud? Uh, kick me out the window. <laughs> Especially if it was that bad. Don't me. I think I'd get disowned. Got a CD on this one. I love the, uh, the mega for the RCD testing. It's so fast. So what we got, what's the highest ones? 18.2. 18.2. 16.5. 5. Okay, brilliant. So that's it. Uh, all of, that's all of our tests here. So all we need to do really are, are the functional tests. So we're just doing the functional tests on the charging point. So A is sort of nothing. B is that the vehicle's plugged in, but it's not charging. C should kick in and start charging. So we've got the green lights there. And then E is, I think, um, error or something like that. So that's all good. We'll put it on charging. We'll plug the tester in and we'll test the internal RCD in the charging point. Try auto. Right. Yep. Is it going to reset here or trip it over there? It should do. Okay, oh, it's tripped at the other end as well. Yep. Okay, I think that should be it. It's tripped four times, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, it's done the whole DC one now as well. Oh, oh yeah. that's okay. Look, that's so it's doing the DC test now. Look, the six milliamp DC test. I didn't realize it did that. That's cool. And that's the end. So, we've done all our tests, we know it's working properly. Question is, what do you think about how it looks? Now, I loved the look of this when I unboxed it because for me, I'm a, an Apple fanboy. This I just, it just reminds me of the old iPod. You know, the first iPod, you know, the, the white, plastic, clear, absolutely beautiful, love it. The problem with this charging point is that when you wrap the cable round, it completely changes the look. That is one thing I do love about this charger is the fact that you press the button and it opens the charging port. That is, that is really cool. But let's wrap the cable around the charger and see how it looks. No matter how hard you try, it just seems to me to be impossible to get it really nice and neat. And I am a bit OCD about cables and stuff. I like cables to look neat. That for me is probably about as neat as it's gonna get. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that looks neat? Or do you think it looks a bit of a mess? <laughs> we bring you a update from Jordan the Numpty. Uh, <laughs> Elijah kindly just pointed out that isn't it supposed to go in the side there? And of course it's supposed to go in the side there. And that's the thing. 
you can tell I've not installed one of these for a while, but that is the thing that makes it look even worse. So then you've got to kind of try and line it all up so that it looks neat and it just doesn't. You can do like big, big loops, but then I just, I want the loops to all be the same size, you know? Tell me what you think. It's all right, but it's just not, it's not got that finesse about it, which it should have because it's such a beautiful looking piece of equipment. But the way the cable goes on it just lets it down in my opinion. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have a tidy up and that's it really. It's kind of weird, I'm not used to finishing at such a humane time of day. It's only two o'clock, pretty chill day really. So that's good, I'm, I'm glad I planned this job correctly. Usually I end up working until six or seven o'clock in the evening because something goes wrong. So yeah, very nice. My favorite part. Lovely. So how do I feel about the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector after today? Well, it's a mixed bag, to be honest. Part of me loves it, part of me hates it, because the Wi-Fi thing is an issue, and I'd love to hear all of your experiences in the comments if you have had issues with connecting the Wi-Fi. Today, it works seamlessly, though, so it's a little bit hit and miss, and that's the trouble. You know, when you can't rely on something to always work, it creates problems. That being said, it kind of looks nice, apart from the way that the cable wraps around it, and I love the way you press the button and it opens the charging flap. But if you want my brutally honest opinion as to whether I would get a Tesla Gen 3 wall connector for myself at home, the answer is no. There are way better charging points out there. My favorite at the moment is the Hypervolt. It's got so much more functionality when it comes to the app where you can track how much each charging session is costing you, scheduled charging, uh, you can do solar charging and all that kind of stuff. This is just a very basic charging point and it doesn't even qualify for grant funding. So I'd say for most people, if you're getting a Tesla, you don't have to get a Tesla charger, but I'll leave that up to you. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. I will leave a link up here to the previous video I made where I did fit one of these at my house and I used it for several weeks. So you'll see that video up in the corner or it'll pop up at the end of this video. But either way, we really appreciate you watching. If you do enjoy our videos, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. There's about a million rakes that I can count on. There's one there, two, three, there's four, fifth over there. That's sixth I see in the back. You're out to get me, man. <laughs>